Okay. 600,000 dead in the Civil War, thousands more from rampant diseases and increasing deaths associated with industrialization, left no one untouched by tragedy at the end of the 19th century. It's no surprise then that spiritualism or the belief in contacting the dead spread like wildfire across the country throughout the century. Spiritualism began in 1848 in Hydesville, New York, when young Katie and Maggie Fox began to seemingly communicate with disembodied spirits through a pattern of unexplained raps in the family home. The story became a national sensation, and the Fox sisters began touring the country, channeling deceased spirits for ever-growing audiences. This was the birth of spiritualism. Spiritualist journals also began spreading the message of spirit contact. Anna Beckwith Hamill published the Primitive Occult Journal right here in Montana. 85 other papers circulated information about spiritualism as well as important issues of the day, such as abolition, women's rights, and child labor. So spiritualism itself became a medium for the message of reform. Spiritual practitioners took a variety of forms. Healing mediums channeled spirits with medical knowledge who either gave instructions for treatment or directly healed the ill through physical contact. With the dangers of orthodox medicine in the 19th century, which included bloodletting and high levels of morphine, it's no wonder people searched for alternative medical treatments. Trans speakers spoke in public, channeling spirits to speak on the topics of the day. Speaking in public had long been unacceptable for women, whose roles were limited to the private sphere. Trans speakers, however, gave women an opportunity to find a public voice, albeit a dead one, as they often channeled male spirits to speak their messages through them. The early trans speakers paved the way for later women suffrage speakers. Spiritualism's progress across the country was known in the West and in Montana. Newspapers throughout the territory regularly reported events and accounts of spiritual practitioners with a decidedly skeptical tone. Early accounts through the 1860s reported of spiritualists who poisoned their children or killed their families. Politicians were denigrated by calling them spiritualists. In Deer Lodge, spiritualism was even used to sell another type of spirit, as in this ad, Oh, right here. <laughs> for a saloon. In January of 1875, the Bozeman Avant Courier reported spiritual manifestations performed by Mrs. Emma Hofbauer Mounts, who became nationally known as Montana's Mountain Medium. Emma came from, to Bozeman from Wisconsin with her husband, Cy Mounts, and together they managed the Laclede Hotel. Uh, Emma discovered her own powers during a life-threatening illness. In December of 1874, Emma was diagnosed with dropsy of the heart, a virtual death sentence in the 19th century. Emma was near death when the spiritualists applied magnetized paper to her, curing Emma of her illness. During her recovery, she believed she was contacted by the spirit of a deceased physician known as Dr. Kellogg, who became a spiritual advisor in her healing capacity. Once healed, Emma Mounts began healing others, prescribing therapies and holding seances. Emma offered proof of her abilities when her young son had accidentally swallowed a pin. Emma gathered a group of prominent citizens and told them of the exact time and place the pin would emerge. The group reported that the pin emerged exactly at the time and place predicted. Emma's activities caused Bozeman's religious community to proclaim that spiritualism was an agency of Satan. This furor by the local preachers may have caused someone to take action when Emma found her dog and its pups poisoned to death by strychnine. The poison also entered a cut on her arm and caused severe swelling. Following instructions from Dr. Kellogg, Emma recovered from this life-threatening incident. Mrs. Bell Chamberlain was an established trance speaker when she spoke in Bozeman in 1878. She would soon come to make Bozeman her home. Bell was praised as an eloquent speaker by her audiences and spoke on a number of topics chosen by committees of audience members, ensuring that it was the spirits and not Bell herself who was discussing the subjects at hand. In later years, Bell's public speaking experience gained her the respect of the community. She coached the local high school debate team and participated in town debates herself, where her thoughts and ideas about women's rights and religious freedom was, it were respected. She also helped found the Bozeman Liberal Union, along with such prominent Bozemanites as Nelson Story and the Reverend Matthew Alderson. 
Spiritualism evolved from the decoding of spirit rapping to the more exciting performances of levitation and manifestations. Spiritualism's popularity also attracted many frauds who deluded naive attendees with fabric ghosts in Halloween masks. Such charlatanry would prove the downfall of spiritualism towards the turn of the century, where major scandals sent shockwaves through the public, causing more skepticism in the press. A reporter at the Anaconda Standard, calling himself the spiritualistic scribe, reported on spiritualistic activities around Butte in the 1890s with a clear intention of debunking what he believed were a bunch of frauds. He attended private seances and public demonstrations around Butte and shared his experiences in a series of articles designed to unmask, defrock, and occasionally run them out of town. On one occasion, the spiritualistic scribe reported on a seance given by a Mrs. C.T. Newton. The reporter described Mrs. Newton entering a cabinet where she channeled spirits, reporting their messages through a long tin horn to an assistant who then relayed them to the audience. Occasionally, the assistant would get the message wrong, and he would receive a thrump on the nose by the horn for punishment. Later in the evening, Mrs. Newton spotted the reporter and had a vision of a man behind a partition wishing to do him harm. Though the reporter claimed disbelief, he said he admitted to sticking to the center of the street when he walked home that night. If we take the spiritualistic scribe at his word, Mrs. C.T. Newton represents the degeneration of spiritualism at the turn of the century, where dutiful missionaries such as Mrs. Bell Chamberlain had passionately attested to the beautiful afterlife, frauds like Mrs. Newton performed parlor tricks for money. Such frauds added to spiritualism's dwindling popularity after the turn of the century. Butte became a haven for spiritualists in the 1890s. In fact, so many spiritualists had lucrative practices that the town wanted to get a share of the cut and passed a town ordinance in 1901, charging $25 for clairvoyants, mediums, palmists, and fortune tellers for licenses to practice in the city. Spiritualism's female champions brought the message of social reform to an unsuspecting public while giving women a public voice and a chance for self-empowerment. In Montana, Mrs. Emma Mounts found alternatives to the limited and dangerous medical practices of local physician. Mrs. Bell Chamberlain offered a voice for women across the state, and Mrs. C.T. Newton found empowerment in a world of limited opportunities for women. Thank you.